Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where an innocent man, who posed no threat to anybody, got violently stomped on by a police officer. On July 26, 2021, the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety received a 911 call from a female resident of Colton Village Townhomes in Orangeburg, South Carolina, alleging that there was a man banging on her door and window, trying to get in. The caller also claimed that the man had a gun in the waistband of his jean shorts. Dispatch instructed all officers in the area to respond immediately, and Officer David Lance Dukes was the first one on the scene. Officer Dukes stepped out of his patrol car with his gun drawn, and then ordered a 58-year-old disabled man, Clarence Galeyard, and his cousin, Demario Julian, to get on the ground immediately. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right here! At this point, Mr. Galeyard can be evidently seen complying with Officer Duke's commands. The body cam footage even captured Mr. Galeyard walking towards the officer with his hands in the air and then going down to his hands and knees soon after. However, before Mr. Galeyard could get down to the ground completely, Officer Dukes decided to violently stomp on Mr. Galeyard's neck. This caused Mr. Galeyard's head to forcefully hit the pavement and consequently left him with a bruised forehead. It was later found that the reason Mr. Galeyard took his time to get down was that he has metal rods and pins in his leg and hip from a previous injury. Right after this, Officer Dukes aggressively placed Mr. Galeyard in handcuffs and then immediately told the second officer that there should be a gun behind him, implying that Mr. Galeyard had allegedly left a gun behind the white SUV where he was standing before the confrontation. There's a gun behind me. There's a gun, I believe, behind me. I ain't got no gun next. Mr. Galliard assured Officer Dukes that there was no gun, and after a brief check, the second officer promptly confirmed that there was indeed no gun to be found. Officer Dukes proceeded to search Mr. Galliard for any weapons and accused him of refusing to listen to his orders. Now, as made evident by the body cam footage seen earlier, Mr. Galliard was in fact complying with Officer Dukes' orders from the get-go. There was not one instance where Mr. Galliard could be seen as a threat, and therefore, Officer Dukes had no right to use any excessive force against Mr. Galliard. Regardless, once Officer Dukes made sure that Mr. Galliard did not have a firearm on him, he decided to search around the SUV himself in hopes of finding the gun. It became clear pretty quickly that there was no gun at all, and that it was just a stick wrapped in shiny silver tape that Mr. Galliard usually walked with as protection from aggressive stray dogs. Officer Dukes and the second officer lifted Mr. Galliard back up on his two feet, who then began to complain about how his head was slammed onto the concrete for no reason. Don't bust my head down. It was also visually apparent that Mr. Galliard suffered from an injury to his forehead, leaving him with a bruise and some swelling. Officer Dukes' reply to Mr. Galliard's confrontation about the matter was, I sure did. You wasn't listening. You threw me down. I so did. You wasn't listening. Yeah. By then, it became obvious that Mr. Galliard needed medical attention, yet neither of the officers on the scene brought that into consideration. Luckily, Officer Aquili Polidor was there to request EMS as soon as she arrived. As Mr. Galliard continued to complain about the ordeal, Officer Dukes walked up to Officer Polidor and another responding officer to tell them about the situation, except it was all a lie. Officer Dukes claimed that when Mr. Galliard walked in front of the SUV, he believed that Mr. Galliard was carrying a gun and repeatedly told him to drop it. He was in front of the car when I came up. And he was walking like this. And I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. I had him at gunpoint. Officer Dukes also alleged that Mr. Galliard had his hands in his pockets and repeatedly ignored requests to show his hands. However, the body cam footage yet again proves that Mr. Galliard was in fact complying with the orders and had his hands well above his head. Officer Dukes told a fellow officer that the sick was the reason he did what he did and that he wished to take that in as evidence. 
Yes, I am. Let's come check him out. The fellow officer swiftly asked him why he would need that as evidence and proceeded to tell him that the body cam footage would be sufficient to prove himself. EMS also arrived on the scene to check on Mr. Galliard. While Mr. Galliard was being examined by EMS, Mr. Julian walked up to Officer Dukes and requested him to provide a card with his details on it. Officer Dukes promptly told Mr. Julian that he did not have a card and that the department did not issue cards anyways. Can I get a card from you? I don't have one now. We don't have one. They, they, they don't give us cards. When Officer Polidor caught on to this, she immediately corrected Officer Dukes and stated that they do have cards and proceeded to provide Mr. Julian with her card. We, we, we have cards. Along with a card that mentioned Officer Dukes' badge number. This goes to show that Officer Dukes was well aware of the fact that his excessive force against Mr. Galliard was not justified and that he tried to prevent himself from being held accountable for it by refusing to identify himself. Once EMS had confirmed that Mr. Galliard would not need to be immediately transported to the hospital, he was allowed to return home along with Mr. Julian. Just two days after the incident, Officer Dukes was fired from the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety after Officer Dukes' on-scene explanation was investigated. During the initial inquiry, Officer Polidor once again stepped up to support the truth, saying that he is not telling the truth. Dukes kicked Mr. Galliard in the neck. In addition, the appointed supervisor for the investigation commented that Officer Dukes was in violation of department policy and that excessive force was used. Orangeburg Department of Public Safety Chief Mike Adams added on to this during a media briefing by stating that Officer Duke's actions were outside the scope of the department's use of force policies. Later, on July 31, 2022, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division announced that he was taken into custody and charged with first-degree assault and battery. A couple months after this, in November 2021, Mr. Galliard received $650,000 in compensation from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Also, city officials said that they would also establish a citizen's task force to provide oversight and guidance with regard to interactions between residents and the Orangeburg police. Mr. Galliard's attorney, Justin Bamberg, said that Mr. Galliard is pleased to put this very troubling incident behind him and looks forward to moving on with the rest of his life. We appreciate how quickly Orangeburg City leadership moved to make this right by Mr. Galliard. I've handled numerous cases involving police violence previously, and rarely have I seen a city swiftly accept responsibility and also work to ensure that this never happens to another person.